tell you that when someone asks me what I've been up to, I don't know where to begin. It feels nearly impossible for me to define two and a half years gone by so cordially. So when I, having come down from the night before and an insufficient amount of sleep, saw you for the first time in two years, I had to laugh as one of the first things you asked me was, so you still smoke? Well, see, it's funny because I did yesterday. So you do? Well, no, I swear that was the first time since middle school, yet since my confession, I cannot escape your playful punching of my arm accompanied by your familiar joshing face, nor can I dodge remarks like, once a stoner, always a stoner, for the rest of the afternoon. <laughs> yeah. From the start of our day, here I'm continually noticing your transformed figure and the absence of the big Rachel I used to know. Not that it was just your body either, because I swear, today I felt like your weight loss had taken your biggest smile and your bigger voice along with it. And I thought back to sophomore year when Javier was still talking to you, telling me you've been struggling with bulimia. And I would think back to eighth grade so painfully confused because there wasn't a time when you weren't beautiful to me. Everything about you was beautiful, like the way you gave hugs. I remember cruising the hallways with you in the morning always took so damn long because there wasn't a kid in that school we would pass who didn't want a hug from you because your hugs used to be like the nectar of life and I have spent all of high school trying to learn how to give hugs like you. Not just four arms together, but one embrace of shared joy and sadness, like some sweet fluid passed through us both. I have always wanted to hug like you. Because your understanding and closure was what kept me from dying, and yet sanctuary from danger was not what I felt today. Only two arms, weak with insecurity, and one heart grown soft. I still caught your crafty smile as I told you I do slam poetry now, and you asked me if that makes me a beatnik now or something as you snapped a single hand before me, but your full laughter was missing. With every bad joke I told, it could not be found. I remember I could always make you laugh no matter what happened. I would say something absurd enough to rapture your emotions bubble and crack your stone face open with that beaming grin I knew so well and I could get you to talk again. When the pain caused you to come to school without words, head down and silent, I broke down your careful guard. My outrageous humor always made you happy again. So if even I can't make you happy anymore, sweetheart, You've been smoking way too long. See, it's funny how you, you used to take care of me when I was reckless or hiding under tables during classes or laughing, laughing like I had to keep laughing or I'd stop breathing. Yes, you kept me from drowning with loving arms that always promised to be there and with that smile that always promised to melt us both into warm oil that could only float on water and I remember all those times when the burden on you was too great, the grief cutting in like the blades that crisscrossed your forearms, too sharp to talk about. You would talk to me and sometimes we didn't have to talk because with one meeting of our eyes and exchange of past and present, we both already knew everything that could be said in words. And while I could read others like a novel, I digested your emotions like they'd been spood fed from a comic book into the bottom of my belly. So I told you goodbye that day. And you told me you'd be safe. You take care of yourself now. As if I was still the one who needed taking care of. As if you were the one caring for me. As if I was still the one drowning and I laughed because it hurt. And it hurt because, because I've been taking care of myself for some time now. And now I am certain you are the one in need of a warm embrace. The very finely crafted gift which you passed on to me. If only you saw that, if only you would let me take you in my arms like you had so often done for me and let me cherish you. Your precious smile, your laughter that melted mountains in the soft beating of your wounded heart. The time has come when I must return the favor and I only hope as I hear the patter of feigned laughter falling like paper that I did not wait too long to catch you. Oh.